Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today you join me in Empire Earth. Oh, the word Empire it just reminds me of something oh so glorious. Ah, oh, the Empire. Well, anyway, today we're playing Empire of, a game very similar to Age of Empires 2 and Rise of Nations. It took parts of those games and decided, you know what, everyone loves going through the ages of Age of Empires. You start out with just sticks and stones, and then you go up to guns. Empire of said, how about we go all the way up to Mars, and the game was actually just not the best. So the developers of Empire of effectively spent all of their time creating a massive game that spent a huge amount of time and as a result finished with a game which um, functions almost barely. Now I have massive nostalgia of this game from playing it many years ago back in 2001 when it first released. However going back to play it I realised that the unit pathfinding is about as effective as rolling an egg down a very bumpy hill. This game really is something majestic and many of its features are perfectly balanced and have 100% no exploits. Anyway let's see how well the multiplayer community of this games going. Now Age of Empires 2 multiplayer community was mental. Now if any of you have played Empire Earth in the last, I don't know, two years, give me a shout in the comment section because I humbly believe that I might have been the only one to play this game in at least the last six months. And uh, yeah, apparently the servers are down, so please check your internet connection. I don't know, I can see the ethernet cable coming out the back of the computer. I'm pretty sure my servers aren't down. Maybe it's the game servers that are down. Oh, what a shame. Welcome to Sierra.com. If you want to play on the LAN or connect directly, hit the other multiplayer options. <gasps> That's cool. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. <gasps> you can do your own LAN game with 56.6 kilobits per second. Hang on a second. Oh, am I getting an advert? Why the heck is there an advert in your multiplayer launcher? Does this actually load up a website? Come on, click it. No, the link's not working. Sierra, come on. Surely you're, you're still running. Nope, Sierra is closed. Oh no, the, the website is loading up. What have we got here? Sierra.com is apparently no longer hosting servers for this game. It is instead a outdoor sports kind of shop uh, where you could buy things like canoes. Oh, that's great. Thanks, game. So here we are back in the wonderful game Empire of. As you can see, the multiplayer sadly is not working. If there is a hidden multiplayer community around this game that's still active, give me a shout because by God, this game's multiplayer is just about as meme as you can get. The amount of completely broken and hilarious strategies in this game, uh, there's just too many to count. I mean, personally, in this game alone, I think I have a list of about 14 active and working exploits which all have absolutely no counter and can guarantee a victory. So what are we going to do today ladies and gentlemen? Well I can't show off all of the exploits I have for this game because we'd be here for about four hours and I'd eventually run out of tea and my god you do not want to see me when I run out of tea ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. Right so ladies and gentlemen I feel like it's time we dive right into this wonderful single player game. So without further ado sit back relax make sure you have your cup of tea. If you don't have a cup of tea go get your cup of tea because trust me these videos are best watch with a nice warm beverage you know what today today is a special day i'm going to say very well you can also have a hot chocolate okay you have two choices cup of tea or hot chocolate this is the only time i'm ever going to give it to you so you best use it wisely anyway hope you're all sitting comfortably and if you are one of those absolutely majestic people who you know like to do good deeds like allowing old people to cross the road or giving a tea bag to a friend who's run out then hey maybe you're the incredible and exceptional god tier of human that has liked this video oh my goodness anyway let's dive into this game so it's single player time player name oh yeah that's right I haven't actually decided a player name yet because I only recently bought the game on GOG. So technically, I'm a noob with only about 10 minutes in the game. Player name? Oh, I think we're going to go for... Okay, so for our game today, we're going to be playing as the legendary Big Dave, Destroyer of Reality. He is effectively Thanos, but his name's Dave. He's just a normal bloke you'll find down the pub, but he does have the ability to bend reality to his will and also win almost every single game of Empire Earth. So that's who we're going to be playing as today. Oh, and also, so Empire Earth has a fun little system where you can create your own civilizations. I know, it's wonderful. We have our civilization builder here and you can create anything you like. A few of my favorite special powers that you can have for your civilization include camouflage and cloaking, which if you get both of them at the same time, there's a exploit where if you build a unit and cloak your entire capital at the same time, the units will be spawned cloaked, aka completely invisible to the AI, and they can never be decloaked. This makes them completely and utterly 
invincible. There's also fun other powers like the Crusaders and Cyber Ninjas. Yeah, this game has Cyber Ninjas, ladies and gentlemen. But Fanaticism, as well as Crusaders, is a incredibly perfectly balanced over-the-top bonus. However, there is one <laughs> Civilization bonus which has no counter, is completely and utterly broken, and will destroy each and every single game. And that is, of course, the Priest Tower. The Priest Tower is literally a tiny, flimsy construction. Imagine a treehouse, but at the top of the treehouse, you have this bloke over here, and he's just shouting a ton of stuff about worshipping the tea gods, and everyone walking past turns their head and goes, you know what, I quite like tea. I like what this priest is saying. Yes, the priest is telling me to like and subscribe. Oh, yes, I'll be doing that priest. See what I did there, ladies and gentlemen. It's all subliminal. But yes, the Civilization Builder is pretty wacky, and if you build your Civilization correctly, you can basically cheese literally everything. For example, we're going to create a civilization now which has absolutely no counter. So we're going to go for a priest tower which costs us 30 points giving us 70 points left. Now for the rest of this we basically want to have the cost reduction of towers, the range of towers and the hit points of towers. Yes you can see where we're going. We have the priest tower who is now a increased range, hit points and cost reduction. You know what whilst we're at it, let's also add in attack and build time reduction. <laughs> So we have the most powerful towers anyone could ever want. So there we go, we have our brand new civilization. It's completely and utterly powerful and 100% balanced, so we will name it Perfectly Balanced Civ. There we go. Now it's time we jump into the game. So we go single player, play a random map as Big Dave the Destroyer of Reality against a computer. You know what, we're going to say large map, we're going to make it planes. We're going to say we start with quite a high amount of resources. I like to start in the Copper Age because the Prehistoric Age is really boring and the Stone Age is just literally prehistoric age but you've moved up an age and absolutely nothing changes and we'll end in the space age. Now I like starting with the entire map revealed. It means both for myself and the AI the map is revealed so it's basically balanced. Also the AI cheats anyway so there's no need. Basically if you were to build say a large amount of archers the AI will always immediately start amassing a perfect counter to whatever you've built. That's why my strategy is going to be so effective. So there we go medium difficulty. Let's go and destroy the AI. And here we are in the game ladies and gentlemen our lovely civilization over here and the AI down to the south now one of my favorite exploits that you can immediately do at the start of the game is you just um, place down a ton of wooden palisades around the enemy <laughs> town center and that means that the enemy can no longer build any units now I don't actually need to go and build that because um, yeah the AI can't counter it in any way it's perfectly fine just leave it as it is <laughs> right anyway we need to get to work building up our civilization how that works is just a quite simple setting up all of our lovely little workers to start chopping down trees and harvesting all of these various resources. Now whilst we're at it, let's build another settlement over here near these deposits. Perfect. Now we want more citizens. Citizens, however, cost food. As you can see, they cost 80 food. So to build one citizen, that's going to set us back 80 food. We're now down to 750 food. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I don't like that. I want to not have to pay for any of my units. So I'm just going to hold down shift and use the hotkey to build a citizen, which is C. So shift C, and then I'm going to go over to here and give all of my food to the AI. And I'm going to hit cancel and then I'm going to not build these citizens. And suddenly we've gone from having 800 food to having 1080 food despite the fact we haven't harvested any food. So there you go ladies and gentlemen, that's how to get any unit for free in this game. <laughs> oh it's perfectly balanced. So yes we'll do it again and we once again give all of our food to the AI, hit cancel and then just undo this and lo and behold we're now up to 1200 food. But we do actually want citizens so I'm going to start producing them nonetheless. Now the AI in this game can be cheesed in many ways. As you've seen you can build these incredibly shoddy wooden palisades around their town centers and as a result they're not able to actually deploy any units. But don't worry the AI cheats anyway so they're able to build buildings no matter what. They'll just abandon this town center and build a few more over here. It's a shame but sadly that's how the AI works. If there's a way to cheat they're always going to do it. Now in this game when you start out you don't actually have a civilization selected and you need to pick a civilization. Now personally, I'd like to load a civilization, so we're going to be loading the perfectly balanced civ. So there we go, we hit load, and as you can see we have the civilization we just created. And we're bam, now we can build these fantastic perfectly balanced towers. And they only cost 51 gold and 85 wood because of the decreased cost. 
So we're going to build one of these towers and send a sieve off, literally just straight down here in towards the AI. Now we, you don't need to actually accompany him because uh, as soon as he gets this tower down he physically can't be killed so just send that little AI off on his adventure. Now at the moment I'm currently placing loads of my little citizens into this lovely little uh, settlement we had and now it's suddenly become a town center. Town centers are much better because they allow you to do research, tech up to the next age as well as absolutely cheese the citizens. So there we go and then we donate all our food away, we hit cancel and there we go free food, free citizens, everything I wanted and more. Oh my goodness, this settlement's going to be crazy. It's just sat between two incredible gold mines. Oh, now that's very tasty. Oh, uh, here we go. Our lovely little female citizen has got to work building our first ever perfectly balanced priesty tower. Now, similar to Age of Empires 2, that game had priests. Now, priests had a very special and slightly cheesy ability where they could convert units. However, in Age of Empires 2, that system was very balanced and the actual conversion of units was quite difficult to pull off. This game, however, conversion works a little bit differently. So we've placed down this lovely little perfectly balanced Civ Priest Tower, which has a range of 7, which is about the same as a catapult in this game, basically meaning any AI that wanders in past this line is immediately picked up and converted. A conversion costs 50 power, but as you can see, power regens very quickly. This tower is also not easy to kill at all at 1785 hit points. So basically, this tower is impossible to defeat, because if the AI were to ever send, say, I don't know, a few catapults its direction, it's simply converts the catapults and the catapults then start fighting each other. Oh, here we have it. We've discovered our first AI. What's this? A tiny little settlement? Now, the AI settlements, they can't attack you like in Age of Empires 2, but that massive tower there could, so that tower has sadly yeeted my poor little citizen. But now that we know where the AI's next settlement is located, that does give us quite a nice little advantage. Oh, and also, you might be wondering who this guy is, because I didn't build him. We only had that one female settler down here, but that's where you're wrong because um, this lovely little citizen was an AI citizen that must have wandered in from this direction, either looking to build. Oh no, here comes another. So yes, these lovely little citizens just wander in from the countryside. They get this little glowing orb. Someone shouts, hey, you should drink tea. They take a sip of tea and now look at them. They're one of us. <laughs> Now, we can do whatever we like with these guys. We could put them to work in a mine, or much better, we're going to use them to build yet another one of these towers, but this time over here, because we know there's a settlement nearby. Yes, you can see what's happening now. <laughs> so immediately, we've got a way of getting free citizens, even though we technically already had a way of getting free citizens. So yes, you know, just more balance. Oh, what's this? Is that another citizen that's just wandered past? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, maybe we should uh, set up a town over here, because we're going to be converting a lot of people. So we're going to come down here and just build yet another tower. Basically, the more towers you have, the more impossible it is to counter. I mean, for example, now our range stems over to this settlement. So if, say, a citizen is just wandering down and dropping off a resource, it can then immediately be converted. So what we've done is we've basically turned one citizen into three citizens by just running down here and setting up all of these lovely little towers. As you can see, the strategy is going quite well. Oh, what's this? It's a wall. Oh, that's nice. So we've spotted that the enemy has walls. Oh, and also here comes another citizen. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Citizen. Oh, look at him. He's trying to haul gold back to his lovely little settlement over here. And this one as well. He's just, uh, he's just wandering around. He's just gone to his little home. But no, we've stolen him. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. This is going great for a nice first start. So now we have the barracks set up. Barracks are very similar to the wonderful stone towers, except the barracks have one unit which I absolutely love. So this here is the Samson. It costs 65 gold and 65 wood. Now we don't have much gold and wood, so we're going to build these Samsons for the sole reason of building one, clicking this, and then trading away our gold and wood. And then we hit cancel, we cancel the construction, and then we've doubled our gold and wood. And you just want to do the same until eventually we have infinite gold and infinite wood. So there we go, we're now up to 348 gold, make that now 600 gold, and we haven't even built a single Samson. And of course, a Samson can literally directly be converted into a brand new priest tower. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We want more priest towers, and we want them literally everywhere. So there we go, we're now up to 1,433 gold, and we have a fair few more towers to build. I think, you know what, we should get one built over here, and then whilst we're at it after you build that one, I just want basically a wall of conversion towers, meaning if the AI ever decides to venture up north, they're just immediately going to be converted. Oh my goodness, look at this great migration of AIs. I think we need even more conversion towers in this area because it looks like the AIs are trying to use it to run through our lands. You know, I'm going to use the AI citizens to defeat the existing citizens. <laughs> Where are they going? They must, they must have built a settlement somewhere around here. 
Okay, you know what, we're gonna need a few more conversion towers then. Ah, yes, I see, they're trying to build a wall. That makes sense. Right, build a conversion tower next to the wall. Oh yes, this is going very well. Yep, as you can see, we found lines of AIs venturing north, meaning we need to get more conversion towers up and running. Yeah, sadly, this one conversion tower is just not enough. We need multiple. There's just simply too many. Oh my god, I think we need about four towers here. Oh, and yes, the amount of converted citizens is starting to increase. This is going very well. And that tower's built, so let's go find where all of these red AIs are running off to. And whilst we're at it, let's try and get a few more free units going. Oh my goodness, yes, this is going great. This is going very well. Oh, the mass conversion. These, <laughs> the citizens can't do anything to counter it. I see, they're trying to bring resources along to build this great big wall. But the great big wall is just getting, um, just getting... <laughs> kind of countered by all these conversion towers because they're converting all of the workers. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, right. Yeah, I think we've we've done a good wall of conversion towers on this side. So let's start advancing north. We basically just want to paint the map, really. Actually, no, let's go down south and start aggressively placing these towers. Yes, this seems like a good idea. Oh, my goodness. We just have so many citizens now. What am I to do with them all? Can I just... I guess I could set them on building houses. Okay, just build houses. Oh, no, are we under attack? What have they built? over here. Oh, nothing. Nothing. We just built this tower. Oh, I see. We built a conversion tower next to a barracks. <gasps> Yes! Okay, right, we need more. This is brilliant. Okay, so this means whenever they deploy something from the barracks, we can immediately convert it if we have enough towers here. Okay, I want more suicide citizens coming. All of you, come over down here and help build this tower. I'm going to steal your entire army, AI. <laughs> I'm so sorry. As you can see, this lovely little bowman they have, um, we're just going to convert him. There we go. We do a little prayer on his head. Drink Yorkshire tea. It's the best tea. And there we go. Now he's ours. Although he is attacking his own barracks. Right, maybe we want them to move away from the barracks. There we go. That's a good, good, um, good positioning. <laughs> How is the AI even meant to counter that? There's just no way. You just spawn in a unit and they're just nabbed by the enemy. Oh, that's great. I love that. Now, we could probably do a natural tower somewhere around here to actually scare off the enemy from advancing too quickly. Oh, and we actually did accidentally build a Samson. Okay, Samsons are very cheesy. Oh, hang on. Do they spawn another unit? Yes, they spawned a cavalry. <laughs> we got a free horseman. Where do they make that? Oh, they've got an archery range here as well. <gasps> There's an archery range? Okay, we need another one. More towers. Oh, please, more towers. As long as we just don't build them too close to this enemy tower over here, we've won. There's no way they can counter it. Oh, yes. So, the Samson is brilliant because every unit in this game has a counter, basically. And against the counter, the unit can do nothing. So, this tower would normally absolutely rinse every single unit I sent its way. The exclusion to this is the Samson, which it does about 1% damage against. Oh, wow, they have an entire farm system set up over here. Oh, this is brilliant. This is going to be so many nice free conversions set up around here. Right, we needed more towers then, converting the enemy. <laughs> I love the aggressive conversion strat because there is um no counter. No counter whatsoever. And you ha do need to bear in mind that other than these very bad Samsons that we've just sent in against an enemy tower, we have not built a single offensive enemy unit. We only have citizens. And they're the only things we've built. Just citizens. Oh, I've jumped into the midpoint of the video when you were least expecting me. And that's right, I'm here to remind you to go refill your cup of tea, get another one if you haven't got one, and also, hey, maybe stay hydrated because hydration is important. What should you hydrate yourself with? Tea, of course, and if you have any coffee nearby, make sure to lob it into the nearest tea and make the queen proud today. And hey, if you feel extra special and saucy, why not give the video a like? Mmm, if you haven't already, because you know what? No judgment. Although, if you don't feel like it, hey, you give the video a dislike. It's up to you, the choices is yours. Yeah, something I want to check up on is to see if they've managed to free their capital building, because they will have certainly built a new settlement, but ah oh yes, it would appear they, they did manage to free up the capital building. Oh no, no they didn't. They never managed to free it up, but instead they're just walking through the um, ropes. So basically the AI for some reason in this game is never coded to destroy a unfinished building that it doesn't deem a threat, like a wooden palisade. So it's never going to destroy these unbuilt buildings, but what it does mean is that the capital of this this um, civilization can't actually produce any units. Instead, they're building their units elsewhere. Oh, and the AI made a spearman, which is now mine. Thank you very much, AI. I'd also like this spearman here. Can we have that? Of course we can. Thank you for the free units. Can we get another tower? I'd like one here. Right, I'm sure the AI has other settlements set up around here somewhere, so we're going to have to start advancing the massive conversion wall, because it, they're going to be somewhere around here. So if we just set up a few walls, we'll be good. Oh, what's this? They've got a massive gatehouse built here. 
here. Okay, that leads me to believe that something magical's around here. Ooh, let's go see. Oh no, we're under attack. Oh, they killed my little AIs that were wandering through their lands. Oh well, that's fine. They've got a lot of towers built up around here now. Oh, and we've managed to convert all of their local farmers into ours. Oh, and the... <laughs> The little citizens that I'm converting are actually going and building the palisades around their capital now. Oh, that's very nice of us. Oh. Now, whilst we're at it, how about we build a, um, how about we build a tower next to their capital as well? That seems like a nice gift. Oh, so this game has some unique graphics, to say the least. You can go in right the way down to the map and take a look at what is apparently a human. This is a human. Look at those graphics. Those are some beautiful 2001 graphics, I'd like to say. I mean, for its time, this game was actually incredible to look at. Now, however, a little bit questionable. I mean, just look at these people. These are human people, apparently. Oh, they're beautiful. I know. Let's advance the next stage what do we need 660 iron we've got it's the food we're lacking okay time to cheat in some food there we go that's enough food to advance to the next stage so we're going up to the bronze age now are we under attack no we're not under attack we're just stealing the ai there's nothing under attack down here we have how many towers one uh, yeah we have one two three four five six seven eight nine towers down here meaning as soon as the enemy spawns in anything it's immediately converted Oh, right. Maybe we should build our own town centre down here. What are we meant to do with all of these citizens? Actually, I've got an idea. So one thing you do in this game is you advance settlements by ploughing citizens into them. So this tiny little settlement here needs five citizens and then it upgrades to a capital. So we're going to plough five citizens into it and it's going to upgrade itself. At least these towers over here got built. There must be an AI settlement somewhere around this point on the minimap. It has to exist. Ooh, we're in the Bronze Age now. Nice, that means we can upgrade walls and towers. Cost 100 stone, so we'll do that. And also our barracks now produces sadly different units that cost less. I know, it's annoying. As a result, that means we're going to need to start building better buildings. Like, build more expensive units. So I'm going to have you construct a siege factory right here, little citizen. And then after you do that, let's also build a archery range next to it. What the heck is going on here? I just come in and see a massive Samson just smashing up a ton of buildings and there's just a hippo here. Okay, right. Little citizens. Um, what can we have you guys do? Is there anything for you to do? I mean, there's some resources here we could try and steal. <gasps> There's an AI building over here. Okay, right. More towers. More towers. Convert these horsemen. Right, this horseman is now ours. I don't know. Let's use him to go attack some peasants. Oh, there we go. We've upgraded this building to being a capital, meaning we now plow it in and let's see what we get. I've never upgraded past the capital before because I haven't played this game in a very, very long time. So I can't remember what it is. Oh, wow. Yes, there really is something going on over here. They've built granaries and they're trying to build farms and we've just converted everything. So let's build another one. Now, what the AI has built here is a temple. Now, a temple should technically stop us from being able to convert in this area, but for some reason, someone slipped up in the coding and these massive towers are able to convert in this area, which is fine. <laughs> Thank you, temple. Yeah, this game, it is a unique specimen. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure we can just finish the game by having all these citizens that we've stolen, just having them attack the, um, the shrine. Now, this game was quite revolutionary for its time because it actually had a morale system. As you can can see there the morale of that unit was really low. Having low morale basically meant that you weren't really able to do as much damage as you otherwise should have, which was actually a really interesting and fun feature. Quite advanced for its time if I'm honest. Right, now I'm just going to demolish this wall here and set my citizens to attack. Uh, now sadly, this game isn't quite Age of Empires 2 and it's very much not Rise of Nations. To defeat the AI in this game, you need to destroy everything. Absolutely everything. You need to destroy their stables, you need to destroy their houses, you need to destroy all of their units, because the game just didn't have a way of conceding. It just felt that wasn't necessary. Anyway, we're just going to use all of the citizens we've gained and use it to destroy the enemy capital building. It's going to take us a while because they only do one damage a hit, but uh, we have stolen a lot of them. Oh, look at all of these towers over here. <laughs> what is this guy? <laughs> just citizens everywhere. Oh, this is brilliant. You see, it takes the AI ages to realise, hang on a second, this area isn't safe. Oh, that area definitely isn't safe right build the tower over here instead 
It apparently takes a while to destroy the capital building. I really, really do want to just build some uh, trebuchets, but sadly, we're in the pesky bronze era, so we can only build the vastly inferior catapults. Right, I'm just going to fill up the rest of the map with a few of these towers, so that we are 100% certain the AI hasn't run off anywhere. Oh, yep, yeah, the AI is now trying to send phalanxes against us. These are quite high-level phalanxes. They've been upgraded with master weapons, but um, they're just uh, getting converted, which is a real shame. Sorry, phalanx. Is. But we know where they're coming from. They're coming from this direction. So uh, logically, we should build a conversion tower over here. Oh no, the enemy is using an earthquake against me. Very powerful. However, uh, we should be fine. I mean, worst thing happens, they uh, destroy a conversion tower. Yeah, it looks like they're going to destroy one conversion tower. Ladies and gentlemen, F in chat for conversion tower number 75 or whatever. Absolutely devastating. No, it's fine, honestly. Uh, it really has made no difference. Other than make my screen shake horribly. How can we please? Please destroy that capital building of theirs. We're about halfway there. They got another one over here, by the way. That's um, 6,000 hit points that we need to destroy using peasants. Oh, great. This game also has heroes, which I have not even touched upon. And I have another exploit where you can build multiple of them because the game normally restricts you to one hero because guess what? They're completely and utterly overpowered. Who would have guessed that Gilgamesh himself in the game is relatively broken? But yes, what's even more broken is having two Gilgameshes, which, as you can guess, is probably not allowed by the game. However, there are of course ways, but once again, too little time, too many exploits. I probably should make a second video on this, and I guess if this video, if if this video does well, I guess I could make a second video, but sure, why not? I'll look into it. But yes, I'm very interested to see if people did actually play Empire Earth, because it was a very big hit upon release. However, it just never really held up to the same degree that Age of Empires did. The game developers definitely wanted this game to be the brand new Age of Empires. They had the great graphics they were like hey you know people like graphics we got graphics look at look at our graphics why aren't you loving our graphics and for its time these graphics were incredible but um just what are they <laughs> they're very um they're very unique oh goodness oh wow there must be some ai's over in this direction because we're getting some spontaneous conversions coming from here very nice oh no we're under attack they are ascending bowmen against us but no no it's fine it is completely utterly fine yeah so there must be another kind of camp over here somewhere because we're building a um yeah we're gonna be able to build this conversion tower oh this will be good so even though we're getting shot at because i specced into faster conversion tower and cheaper conversion tower we can build this thing faster it has more hit points and it's much cheaper so there we go it's built before they can even kill all of our workmen and we'll just run them away and now we can start converting lovely if you look down here in the bottom right, we have about 154 Todd Howards out of 500. Oh my goodness, these these towers down here have been very effective. You can just see where they've spontaneously picked up a ton of random AIs. Oh, this is great. Oh, and here they come. This is the first battering ram they've sent against us. So yes, a battering ram, logically the perfect counter to this strategy. However, no, you'd be wrong. Uh, that battering ram is now ours. So thank you, AI, for that. <laughs> Oh, it's perfectly balanced as all things should be. Honestly, the power of tea. Sometimes it goes too far, but today, this is great. This is everything you could wish for. Oh, there's some kind of camp over here. What have we got? We've got a couple of AI workmen running around. Here it is. What is it? It's an actual town center. Right, destroy the tower, I guess, um, Mr. Battering Ram, and we'll build a conversion boy. There we go. Convert them. Oh, and yes, Battering Ram versus tower. Battering Ram probably won't quite win, but it'll get very far. Oh, and also, um, because I know that the AI is around here using this resource here and that this tower won't cover to this resource one thing we can do is just run around the side and build a tower here because the area of effect can reach over the trees so nothing is safe you build walls no nope, we'll, we can convert past walls quite happily what is going on over here we're under attack they've got chariots and battering rams so um, it's fine it doesn't matter we can uh we can counter that no problem oh my goodness the battering ram is actually going to do it and also yes this visually is a battering ram do not question its design it's beautiful and also don't question the fact it moves at two frames per second oh no it was defeated oh what a shame oh don't worry we got a new one thanks ai we'll be borrowing him he'll trust me we'll use him so there we go battering ground come on round destroy your own tower please oh beautiful oh we stole a chariot over here very nice oh, there's a siege factory so that's where they're all coming from well, obviously the counter to that is to build behind the trees and steal everything that spawns in at the siege factory. Oh my goodness, this is the um, peasant army I've managed to form down here in the south. Right, we're just going to um, plow it into this building here. What are you? Cannot garrison anymore. Oh, so we maxed out this capital 
building. Okay, that's fine. I guess I could send the peasants into the enemy armies and use it as a weapon. Um, right, peasant forces. Uh, to victory in this direction, roughly. Maybe I should give you a hospital to heal up at first. Yeah, okay, right. Build yourselves a hospital so you heal. Ah, there we go. Now they all get healed. Wonderful. Alright, AI citizens charge towards the enemy. We know they're roughly around here somewhere, so um, lay your life down on the line for me and uh, have a good time, you know? Yes, we could send actual trained professional soldiers to support you, but um, you know, they might. I think they're busy, probably. Look at them, they're busy sat on their horses. Oh, and there's another capital building destroyed by a battering ram. You know, these battering rams, maybe we should put them to work and actually start wiping out the AI. We have an absolute ton of towers down here that could certainly use a good few battering rams. Let's go use the battering rams the AI decided to give us. Right, you guys, got an adventure for you. You see, they were sent to attack our towers, but no, um, we need them to destroy your the AI's towers. All six of you battering rams, come down here and go to town on these towers. What the heck is the AI doing here? What is this? This is just tons of farmland, but with no farm buildings, because I think they worked out... Okay, no, the AI has to be broken. This is... N what? <sighs> what is this? <laughs> This makes no sense. Oh my goodness, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. Oh, what did you give me? A free horseman. Okay, let's use it against this elephant that I'd like to also steal. Oh no, this tower looks like it's going to be a little bit busy, so let's just build another conversion tower next to it. Yeah, these elephants are the most expensive units we can build at the moment. Um, how much are they? Let's check the barracks. 120 food and 80 gold. So yes, rather costly. However, there we go, we converted one of them. I'd like to convert this one over here, actually, because it has full health. So let's take this brand new full health, actually upgraded elephant as well. Look at that, it's got increased range. And let's just steal him. Thank you for that, AI. I like the elephant. Yeah, so um, apparently the AI has just filled this bottom half of the map with fields and nothing else. It's not even using the fields. Oh, I just have questions. I have oh, so many questions. Also, by the way, I'd like to point out that I've been in this game for what feels like several hours, and we've advanced one age. So the AI is now actually trying to send an army towards me. Uh, the only issue is they're sending it to me in the form of one by one, so I now have quite a few of these elephants and swordsmen. Uh, right, you know what, let's, let's go on the offensive, I guess. Have we got an army sat down here as well? Yes, we actually do have quite a sizable armed force set up here as well. Right, well, let's send them north as well. Yeah, let's go on a minor offensive against the AI. Wow, a lot of elephants warfare is happening right now. Actually, let's bypass the elephant warfare and just try and work out where the AIs are. Okay, so we know there's a barracks here. Okay, this is interesting. I think we need to start building a few more towers in advance. This looks like a good position. Yes, yeah, so if we've got a barracks sat here. Oh, yes, right, this seems good. We push up on the AI, build these towers, and they're job done. Oh no, there's an elephant attacking us. Wow, at the moment we're just watching modern elephant-based warfare. Now, these aren't just your regular elephants. These are elephants which have massive cardboard boxes is strapped to the top of them and these cardboard boxes shoot deadly bolts <laughs> Yep, yeah, thanks to the person who decided upon this game design. Oh, I love the battle elephants. They are beautiful. And of course, very easy to be converted as well. As well as all of the horses. Yeah, they can be converted quite nicely. So there we go. Job done. We've managed to defeat the AI. Oh, right. You know what? I think um, we should probably conclude the video because there is absolutely nothing the AI can do to win at this point. We have too many towers. No matter what kind of technology they have, I think the only thing in this game which can logically counter these conversion towers is a large amount of universities, but even then they can't be used offensively, or a large amount of airplanes, but against the AI that's just not going to happen. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is all of the Empire Earth I'm going to show you today. If you have enjoyed what you've seen, hey, feel free to give the video a like. And also, seriously, if you have played this game before, give me a shout, because I'm interested to see how active the community around this game still is, because I somehow imagine it's probably nowhere near as lively as the Age of Empires 2 community, because by god, they're even hosting their own tournament still. I think that is phenomenal. Hats off to all of you in the Age of Empires 2 community for keeping our RTS genre alive. Also, I have quite a few plans for the next video, and I think the best way to do it is to put it to a vote for you guys, because um, honestly, at this point, we could make literally everything. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do another video on this lovely game, Empire Earth, as there are a few more exploits I'd like to show off, such as the um, infinite range, long range missile, which is the ability to destroy a player in about five seconds. There's also things like the uh, destruction 
destruction of wall in about five seconds where if the AI builds up a huge wall like this which technically would take time to get into you have a way of just literally teleporting and phasing through it uh, there's the infinite fanatic mode there's the unlimited camouflage there's just so many things I'd love to cover in this game and so yeah if you guys want to see more of this then go down to the comment section and I guess vote A and then vote B can probably be for Skyrim because there's a Skyrim exploit I'd like to test out it does look very cheesy and very entertaining alternatively many people have asked for Kenchi I have effectively an A4 document spreadsheet of Kenchi exploits which do need to be tested out or alternatively vote D for something else so vote A you got this game vote B you've got Skyrim C Kenchi D anything else actually you know I'm gonna throw an E Age of Empires 2 there's another Age of Empires 2 cheesy strategy slash exploit that I'd like to try out for a video which I think could be good fun so there you go ladies and gentlemen it's up to you go down to the comment section and I think it will be quite nice to see what you guys come up with anyway ladies and gentlemen I've been the Spiffing Brit if you've liked what you've seen and you want to see some more feel free to subscribe as it's the best way to know when I upload my videos although logically I should upload every other day at around about 6 30 UK time but then again YouTube might decide not to show it into your sub boxes so uh yeah it's best to stay active and as always a massive thank you to all of my majestic and jazzy beautiful and fantabulous patrons who make these absolutely silly videos possible thank you to each and every one of you you are all majestic and if you're wondering what video you should watch next then look no further than this one on screen now trust me you're gonna love it it's right up your alley if you enjoyed this one and of course it stars me and it has even more tea in it who wouldn't want that anyway i've been the spiffing brit and i'll see all of you in the next one have a lovely day